Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Pettit. I'm your friendly professor for Lucent University and our exciting course on expository preaching. We're live now and awaiting your questions and comments. And you can connect with us at a webinar at lucentuniversity.org. You too can become an expository preacher. It's so exciting to know that you are preaching God's word, you are teaching God's word, and you are reaching people who need to learn the Bible, learn about Jesus Christ. So we take this task of expository preaching very seriously. We don't take ourselves seriously, but we take the task of expository preaching very seriously. Last week, I was preaching in a church, and I spoke at three services on Sunday morning. And it's so exciting to open up God's Word and preach and teach and reach God's people. So send a question, make a comment, and we're here to uh, interact with you. We're here to chat with you about expository preaching, any questions you have, any comments you have. So ask on the chat button, ask on an email, and we'll try to respond to you as much as we can. You can connect with us at Lucent University. We're live on Facebook. Lucent University, if you can find that connection. And many people ask, do I have to have the gift of expository preaching, or is expository preaching a skill that needs to be developed? And the answer to that is yes. It's also a gift. People are good at speaking. People are good at preaching. And some people just naturally have the gift of teaching and preaching. However, it's also a skill that needs to be developed. It's a skill that can be worked on and honed. So it's both. Now, some people obviously are more naturally gifted at teaching or preaching than others. But if you have a gift of teaching, the gift of preaching, it still requires lots of work. It still requires the discipline of study and finding out how to become an excellent preacher, how to become an excellent teacher. So that's why we've set up through Lucent University the course called Expository Preaching several units that you can watch and do the work, and you can enhance your ability to become a great and effective expository preacher. One of the things we like to say is that there's no such thing as a perfect sermon. There's no such thing as perfect preaching, but you can use effective preaching. You can reach out and preach with excellence. You can send a question to us at webinar at Lucent University webinar at Lucent University. Send us a question, or you can send a message through your Lucent CIS class dashboard. If you're a student, if you're already enrolled using the button, send us a message at Lucent CIS class through the dashboard. Now, the other thing we have sometimes questions about is teaching God's word verse by verse, expository preaching, or do you take a whole unit of scripture? Do you take a whole passage of scripture? And we don't believe that expository preaching is always verse by verse. In fact, sometimes you can take too small of a unit of text. If you just take one phrase or one sentence, it may not be enough to explain the context, the whole passage. So for excellent expository preaching, we need to pull back and look at a whole unit of scripture, sometimes a whole story. And we know that there are very many genres of scripture. There's poetry, there's prophecy, there's law. There's all different types of scripture. So when we do expository preaching, we have to make sure that we're understanding the context. We're understanding the writer of the passage. Who's the writer of this book of scripture? We're also always looking at the intended audience. Who were the first listeners? Who were the first readers of this passage? You'll remember that originally the scriptures were handed down to us in an oral tradition, oral fashion. And then later, inscripturated on scroll parchment. So the writing of scripture did not come to until later after the oral traditions were passed down, the oral history of scripture. So whenever we do hermeneutics, whenever we do exegesis, we have to look at who was the original author of this passage and who was the original intended listeners, who were the first uh, hearers or doers of these passages. And that helps us to know what type of genre we're in. Are we in uh, 
maybe the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, the Old Testament law, the Torah, the prophets, the minor prophets, and the major prophets, working our way through poetry. We wouldn't use the same exegesis or the same hermeneutics in poetry that we might use in law or prophets or history. And then finally, into those New Testament books, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We need to know who were those Gospel writers and who's the intended audience of those first Gospel writers. And then later on, the epistles, the Apostle Paul, Peter, writing to their churches. So make sure that whenever you're doing your exegesis, whenever you're doing your hermeneutics, you know who is the author and who is the audience. Also, very, very important to know is the dating of this particular passage of Scripture. What's the date of this intended book or letter? And when we do today's expo exposition, today's hermeneutics, we don't take issues of, of today and read them back into our preaching from that book. In other words, these Old Testament writers didn't know about fax machines. They didn't know about the Internet. They didn't know about webinars. So we don't want to read back into the passage things that are happening today. We want to take from the passage of then and apply it to now. And we always want to use that theology bridge, that theology step. In other words, what's true about that passage then that can be applied to today? We don't ever want to read back into a passage, something from today, and try to get it to fit into that original audience. We want to take the truth from then and apply it to today. So it's very important that we don't do what's called anachronistic preaching or reading back into a passage. That is the wrong way to do expository preaching. We want to take the truth from then, the truth from the original book, and run it through our grid theology, run it through our system of interpretation, which you can learn about in the expository preaching class through Lucent University. Set up, enroll, join us as we study expository preaching and learn how to do expository preaching well. Learn how to preach with excellence. Now, sometimes uh, we just have the passion to do preaching, or we're excited about serving God, but we don't bring the knowledge or the uh, study that we need. So the reason we're so passionate about these classes through Lucent is you too can become an expository preacher. That's right, you. You can become a preacher that preaches with excellence, that preaches with knowledge that preaches with accuracy and relevance. People are, are literally dying to hear the Word of God. People all over the world want to listen to great expository preaching. It's sort of like a restaurant. What type of restaurant do people go to? What type of restaurant do people love? They love the restaurant where there's great food, where there's a chef that prepares the food that tastes really good. You know it is with the expository preacher. We want to go to a church, a place of worship. We want to go to a local place of worship where the preaching is done with excellence, where the preaching is done with accuracy, where the preaching is prepared with relevance, and always coming with God's word, always coming to the audience, preaching God's word. So if you're wanting to be a great preacher. If you long to serve God and serve the church by preaching excellent sermons, we want you to become an expository preacher. We want to help you. We want to give you advice. We want to coach you on how to be a great expository preacher. Now, one of the other things people talk about is voice and gestures and delivery. So we also spend time on that. We will spend time on how to use your hands. How, how do we communicate? What kind of signals do we send? Do we, do we walk around on the platform or do we just stand in one spot and making eye connection with listeners? If we're, if we're always looking down at our Bible or looking down at the podium and we lose energy with the audience, we lose connection with the audience. We want to be open with our face, loud and clear with our voice and looking at the audience, maintaining eye contact with our audience so that we maintain connection with the audience. So you may have some issues that you need to work on. Maybe your voice is too quiet and the sounds are getting muffled in the throat and you may be 
talking like this or maybe talking so people can't understand you. We want you to open up your mouth wide, loud and clear, and articulate your words to preach God's word so that people can listen and hear. Also, maybe walking around too much. We have some people that are pacing back and forth on the stage. Pacing, walking back and forth on the stage. And you may need to stand still, stand upright, move the podium and the Bible right in front of you so that you're preaching God's word. And these are all delivery issues. Delivery issues that people struggle with. Sometimes people using their hands too much. Using their hands to talk about every single word. And the, that way the hands become a distraction. I can't understand what you're saying or I can't understand the theology or the Bible because your hands are so distracting. You may need to use less hand movements. On the other time, on the other hand, some people don't all. Some people just stand still and don't move at all. And that can also become boring or hard to listen to. It can become stale or dry. So we will also work on, in the Lucent University course, Issues of voice, issues of gestures, issues of how, how we move on the stage. So we not only talk about the theology and the doctrine and the hermeneutics and the exposition, we also are teaching you and coaching you and encouraging you on how to use delivery issues, how to speak with clarity. Now, another thing we talk about is illustrations and stories. So we will coach you and teach you and, and prep you on what kind of illustrations to use? What kind of stories do you, do you use? Obviously, we are preaching God's word, where the text of the Bible is our main tool that we're using to preach. But we also come along with illustrations and stories. A quote, maybe a statistic, maybe the words of a song. So we're encouraging you to enroll in the Lucent University course on Expository preaching, and I'm your friend, Professor Dr. Paul Pettit, coming to you live via Facebook. Today, we're asking, do you have any questions you'd like to send to us? You can send those through the Lucent Sys Class dashboard, or you can just send them live through this Facebook live chat. I see a couple of students are joining us, and I love to see the students that are joining us. Maybe you'll email your friends, call your friends, and tell them, hey, Dr. Pettit's live on Facebook. Let's watch and let's ask questions about expository preaching. That's what we're here to do. We're here to serve you as a student. We're here to help you become all God wants you to become. We want you to use your gifts in the church. Use your talents and your skills in those places of worship all over the world so that God's word goes out powerfully to the listeners. And people are able to listen and grow in their knowledge of God and his word. And we're going to help you use your gifts of teaching and preaching so that you too can become an excellent expository preacher. Ask your question now through the app of Facebook. Ask your question now through the SIS class dashboard using the button send a message. You're free to do that now. We want to welcome all the students joining us. We want to welcome all the potential students joining us. Maybe you're watching right now and you're asking, how could I take a class on expository preaching? I haven't heard much about this course on expository preaching. So we want to encourage you to go to Lucent University, which you'll be able to find on the web, and discover how you too can become a student through Lucent University. You too can enroll and learn how how to use lots of gifts in the church, in the place of worship. We not only have courses on preaching, which I'm helping with, we also have courses on English. We have courses on uh, literature. We're in the future having more courses on business in the future and uh, healthcare, medicine in the future. So please spread the word about Lucent University. Get excited. Join us. Find out how God can use you and your gifts. Now, many people want to know a question about expository preaching, and that is, should I preach just one Sunday at a time, a different topic, a different verse, or should I do a whole series, a whole series of messages? And the answer is, we believe that the best way to do it is a series of short topics, 
maybe three weeks, maybe three or four Sundays. And that is sometimes the best way to attack a Sunday message. Now, what's the difference between expository preaching and topical preaching? So questions are starting to come into this live webinar, and we want to answer those. We have a student who's asking, what's the difference between expository preaching and topical preaching? Let me answer that right now. Expository preaching is finding out what the passage says in a particular verse or a story and extrapolating from that the main idea of God's word. It was the great preacher Haddon Robinson who wrote the book on expository preaching, biblical preaching. He talks about repositing an idea, and the word ex means out of. So sometimes in topical preaching, we talk with the topic, and we go looking for verses that affirm that topic. In other words, I'm a topical sermon on parenting. I'm doing a topical sermon on parenting. I have to go find several verses, several passages in the Bible that speak to the issue of parenting. On the other hand, when I do expository preaching, I have this passage, and I don't have a preconceived notion of what the topic is going to be. I don't say, I know this is about uh, faith, so I'm going to preach this on faith. I wait and let the truth of the passage emerge pages of scripture. So that's the main difference between topical preaching and expository preaching. Topical preaching, we already know ahead of time what we're going to preach about. We already know what the topic is, and we preach on that, and we look for verses, we look for passages in the Bible that affirm that. On the other hand, expository preaching is going into the passage ahead of time without any preconceived agenda, without any preconceived notion, and letting the text speak to us, letting the the text say what the original author was saying. That's really the main differences between topical preaching and expository preaching. Now, someone might ask, is one better than the other? Well, we tend to think that expository preaching has more authority, has more impact, but certainly topical preaching has its place in the church. It's perfectly fine to do a three-part series on parenting or a four-part series on faith. Or maybe someone would do a six-part series on prayer. So there's certainly nothing wrong with topical preaching. However, uh, we don't think you should do that all, all year long. We think you also ought to do expository pre preaching where you're just looking at a book of the Bible. Maybe you're preaching your way through Ephesians. Maybe you're pre preaching your way through Judges. And you're letting the truth of those passages come to the forefront. Now, we are live on this webinar, which maybe you'll be able to watch later. You, even though you may watch this later, there's still plenty of great information for you on expository preaching. And we're representing Lucent University. So uh, email your friends, text your friends, call your friends, and tell them it's your chance to ask questions on expository preaching with your friendly professor, Dr. Paul Pettit. And we want to encourage you to use your gifts, to use your skills expository preaching, expository teaching, so that God can use you to reach people in the church, both for evangelism, that is reaching people for Jesus Christ, and for building up the body of Christ worldwide, encouraging people in the body of Christ. And you might find uh, this course, expository preaching, very challenging through Lucent University. And let me encourage you to find out about their price parity charging. That is, no matter what country you're from, the cost can be affordable. You know, some schools are so expensive, it's cost prohibitive to attend. But one of the things I'm so excited about for Lucent University is the tuition is based on which country you live in. So no matter which country around the world you're living in, you can check the enrollment fees and the tuition costs through Lucent University and find out how to sign up to take courses, how to enroll in Lucent University based on where you're living in the world, based on where your uh, country is being charged. And that's a great and a wonderful way that Lucent University is able to reach out to students all over the world based on the price parity index, the, the sort of the uh, world system of how much your country can pay, how much each student in your country can pay. So once again, I'm Dr. Paul Pettit. And this is Lucy University, and we're chatting today about expository preaching. You can send your question in through the uh, Facebook portal. 
or also through the SysClass University Lucent University dashboard and hit the button that says send a message. For those of you that are already Lucent University students, you can send a question to webinar at Lucent University. Webinar at Lucent University. Now, some people have asked, uh, do I really need this kind of tra training? Can I just rely on the Holy Spirit? Can I just rely on God to teach? And won't God just give me the power and the authority to teach? Yes, that's true. You can teach God's word without any training. However, with training, with study, with theology and doctrine and hermeneutics and exegesis, you can become an even better preacher. You can become even more effective. Good and godly people have studied expository preaching, and they want to pass this uh, knowledge on to you so that you too can become an excellent expository preacher. So the answer is yes, yes. You can take preaching and you can preach without any training. However, it's always best to get the most training possible so that you can become the preacher and the teacher that God wants you to become. Now, another question is coming in to the uh, Facebook site. Also, you can ask questions through the dashboard at SysClass using the button send a message for you Lucent University students. And the question is coming in, in your opinion, what and who is the some of the best expository preachers of our time? Now, I'm partial to those in the United States. I think uh, Dr. Tony Evans at the Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship is one of the best expository preachers. I'm also partial to Dr. Charles Swindoll, who preaches at the famous Stonebriar Church. And also, uh, a man in Ohio named Alistair Begg has a radio ministry called Truth Life, the best expository preachers around. I've always joined out of the Moody Church in Chicago, Illinois, Irwin Lutzer. And also, uh, many of you have heard the preaching of Jerry Vine. He's a wonderful preacher. Uh, many of you remember the late, great Dr. W.A. Criswell, who taught for many, many years at the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. But it's a very difficult question to answer because there are so many really, really good expository preachers that whenever we start naming names, we always miss some people. And I have not I've been able to travel widely in some parts of the world. I haven't heard some of the great expository preachers in other parts of the world. But there are good and godly people doing expository preaching. In Atlanta, Georgia, there are a father and a son. Dr. Charles Stanley has taught for many, many years at the famous uh, First Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And his son, Andy Stanley, is teaching at North Point Church in North Atlanta, Georgia. So there are many, many really, really good uh, preachers. I know there's a Prestonwood Church in Dallas, Texas with Jack Graham, who is a really, really good preacher. So uh, again, whenever Whenever we start naming names, we'll always leave someone out. But those are some of the ones that I think are very, very effective. Dr. Tony Evans at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, Dr. Charles Swindoll at the Stonebriar Church in Frisco, Texas, Dr. David Jeremiah, who is out in California speaking at the Shadow Mountain Community Church in uh, north of Los Angeles, California. Uh, so there are uh, all around North America and obviously in other parts of the world, great expository preachers. And you too can become an excellent expository preacher by enrolling in the uh, Lucy University class on expository preaching. You can sharpen your skills. You can hone your gift of expository preaching and you can become a better and a more effective expository preacher by studying, by practicing. Uh, we encourage you to videotape yourself preaching take audios, uh, audio capturing yourself preaching, and by studying, uh, staying in God's word, spending time in prayer, uh, honing the craft of expository preaching, you too can become an excellent expository preacher. And God can use you and use your gifts to reach people in our churches and our places of worship. Uh, some people have said, that it's just enough to preach and let God lead you on Sunday morning. However, we believe that you can practice, you can prepare your sermons ahead of time just as easily as you can as stepping into the pulpit. We don't think it's a, 
uh, a great practice that every Sunday you just uh, try to step into the pulpit and hope that God uh, puts the words in your mouth on Sunday morning. We believe it's better to prepare a message ahead of time. Now, a question is coming in. How much time should someone prepare to preach an expository message? And my answer is a lifetime. Yes, you, <laughs> you should prepare a lifetime of expository. But I think week by week, I would say four hours to maybe eight hours. That is, uh, the great expository preachers will take uh, Monday or a Tuesday morning or a Tuesday afternoon. You have to discipline yourself. Set aside the time. Discipline yourself to say every Monday afternoon I'm going to work on my sermon. Or every Tuesday morning I'm going to set aside this time frame to spend four hours, maybe six hours. And that includes the, the exegesis, the hermeneutics, and also practicing delivery. Now we believe you should manuscript your sermon. What do we mean by that? By manuscripting your sermon, we mean you should type it out ahead of time. Typing out and word for word writing out your sermon ahead of time. Now that takes a lot of time. That takes discipline. But we believe that's the best way to become an excellent expository preacher. So to answer this question, how much time should a preacher dedicate to prepare a message? I believe the correct answer might be somewhere between uh, four five hours maybe, all the way up to eight or nine hours. Now, any more than that, and you're spending so much of your time on preaching that you may be neglecting other work of the ministry. You know, if you're in ministry, you'll be doing hospital visits, calling on the sick. You'll be doing weddings where you're helping people get married. You'll be assisting with funerals where you're helping someone who's passed away, who's died. Uh, you'll be doing some counseling uh, you'll be leading sometimes children's ministry, youth ministry. So you can see that in a normal week, the minister is extremely busy. The Bible says the minister is like a soldier who's very active. The minister is like a farmer who is very, very busy and hardworking. The uh, minister should be about the Word of God. So you cannot take you know, 30 hours during the week to prepare a message. That's probably taking too much time, and you're probably neglecting other areas of ministry. However, if you're taking probably one morning and one afternoon or maybe a whole day to prepare a message, then you're probably a balanced minister. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, on the front end, it's going to take more time. When you just get started on this, the first times you start to preaching, it's going to take more time. As you're older and as you become more accustomed to expository preaching, as you begin to preach more on a regular basis, then you'll become practiced in which stories should I use? Which illustrations should I use? Which humorous stories should I tell? Should I use statistics? Should I use a quote? So the more you preach, the more practice you get. It's like other things it will take you less time to develop your sermon. So this is a great question of how much time it takes to uh, develop an expository sermon, but I want you a little bit to be surprised by my answer. Some of you might be thinking, oh, it probably takes 20 hours a week to develop an expository sermon, and I say no. That's too much time because you're neglecting other parts of the ministry. Now, more questions are coming in as more people join us here on our live webinar. For Lucent University Expository Preaching, we're welcoming you and we're welcoming your questions through the SysClass dashboard for students using the button send a message or you can just send your uh, questions directly to the Facebook site, the Facebook portal, or you can send your questions to webinar at Lucent University. Webinar at Lucent University. I'm not sure if it's Lucent.University or Lucent University, but webinar at Lucent University. Question coming in. Uh, what's the right amount of material to use and how much illustration should you use? Well, we believe as much as 50% Bible and 40 to 50% illustration, story, statistics. If you have a 30-minute sermon, a 30-minute message, and you spend 
all 30 minutes on the text, you're not spending enough time with allowing the air to come in, letting the light to come in. In other words, people need explanation. They need illustration. They need some ways of putting the scripture with everyday life. And one of the things we really need is application, vitamin A, application. So teaching the word of God, but then applying it. Now, what about Billy Graham? Was he a uh, really successful preacher? We believe yes. Billy Graham was a great man of God, and he preached all over the world. And the name of his radio ministry was The Hour of Decision. That's a great ministry, The Hour of Decision. And why was Billy Graham effective? Because he drove people to make a decision. That's a good part of preaching. Preaching is not just relaying information. Preaching is not just giving over more information. Good preaching is transformation. Good preaching leads to changed lives. So Billy Graham taught and preached for many years all over the world. Stadium crusades, a television ministry, and as we know, Billy Graham recently went to be with the Lord, and I'm sure his reward was great when he was welcomed into the kingdom and God said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into thy rest. 99 years old, Billy Graham, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. The fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross to forgive you of all of your sins and rose from the grave so that we could also rise with Jesus Christ. Now, What's the best source for illustrations? Some people are asking, how do I find good illustrations? What's the best way to find good stories? I believe everyday life. The life you live, the interactions you have with people, the situations that come up in life are oftentimes the best way to find illustrations. Obviously, you can find illustrations in books and magazines and television and internet and all that. That's a great way to find illustrations. But we believe everyday life, real things that are happening to you in your life can also be the best source of illustrations. Something in your family, something at work, something in your health, something in sports. How many of you enjoy football? Now I know in other parts of the world, soccer, football, but people like to hear stories about sports. People like to hear stories about business. People want to know, how does this Christianity, how does this Bible affect me in everyday life? So the best way to give illustrations is from everyday life. Now, the question comes in about pathologies or preaching things that are wrong. What do we mean by pathologies in preaching? Well, there are some ways to preach that don't work well. One would be called the merge, okay, the merge. And what do we mean by that? Let's see if I can use my hands here. In the Old Testament, it might say something, do not do this or do not participate in this. And today we might say, well, does that work for today? We just merge those? No, we have to look at the New Testament. We have to look at what Jesus said. So it would be a pathology. Pathos means suffering. And a pathology means doing something wrong. When you're sick or ill and you have a pathology, it means you're, you know, you're not feeling well. So a pathology in preaching might be, you take an Old Testament verse that says, do not mix fabrics. Do not wear silk and linen together. Do not wear cotton. And, do not mix fabrics. And someone today might say, oh, I'm going to go preach that. I'm going to go to my church or place of worship and I'm going to preach. Don't mix fabrics. Don't mix clothing. And we would say here at Lucent University, no, you've encountered a pathology or you're doing it wrong because the reason that old testament message was there don't mix fabrics was to remind the nation of israel that they were not to intermarry they were not to uh, cooperate or partner with other godless nations so today the illustration is not don't mix fabrics but today the illustration might be don't marry an unbeliever or don't go into a close business partnership with an unbeliever so this is one of the pathologies. And in our Lucent University course on expository preaching, we're walking you through several of the different pathologies and urging you to avoid those. So thank you for that good question on what is and what are some of the preaching pathologies that we want to avoid. So welcome to this live webinar. You may be watching later, which you can also 
uh, enjoy and gather some information on expository preaching. And if you're feeling the urge to preach, if you're feeling the leading to preach, if you're feeling like, I wonder if God could use me to preach, teach and share from the pulpit, from the podium, from God's word, we encourage you to go to Lucent University and enroll in, register in, sign up for the Lucent University course on expository preaching, an exciting course on how you too can learn to preach God's word. I'm your friendly professor, Dr. Paul Pettit, and I like to take the time to walk you through what does it mean to preach in an expository fashion. I try to use uh, illustrations, I try to use stories, I try to encourage you to become the expository preacher that God wants you to become. And it's not easy. Someone might say, oh, I just snap my fingers and I become a preacher. Or I just watch one brief video and I become a great preacher. No, this is a craft. This is a lifetime of service. This is a skill and a gift that we develop over time through reading, through writing, through studying, through practicing. You might preach a couple of sermons and at the end you think, wow, that did not go well. But we keep working on it. We keep sharpening the craft. There's no such thing as a perfect sermon. Don't get discouraged if you preach a sermon and it doesn't go well. There's no such thing as a perfect sermon. However, we can preach effective sermons. We can preach helpful sermons. Preaching that makes lives turn around. Preaching that the Holy Spirit can use to bring changed lives. Now, when you're preaching every week, you can start to ask, how do I find the proposition? So the question comes in, how do we find the proposition when we're preaching? Now, what is the proposition? It's a position that you take. You see the root word is pro, which means to put forth, and we take a position. So the proposition is made up of the subject and the complement, and together, the subject and the complement make the proposition. And the proposition can be described as the one main idea of this passage, the one big idea of this passage. It's also then helpful to learn to talk about what is the author doing with what the author is saying. It's the world in front of the text. What is the author doing with what the author is saying? And those combine to make the proposition. Now, questions coming in. Uh, someone from India, someone from uh, another part of the world asking questions. And people are saying they would agree with that statement. Or you might say, let's discuss that or let's disagree with that. But when you preach every week, you ha you'll have to find out what is the proposition? What's the main idea? What's the big idea of this sermon? Because if you have a point over here and a point over here and a point over here, it's confusion. If you have many different disparate points, the sermon doesn't make sense. But if you have one main idea, one big picture that the whole sermon is moving toward, then the sermon has unity and order and progress. The sermon fits together in a unique way and to a whole that makes sense. So I urge you to sign up for the course on expository preaching through Lucent University, and I urge you to practice expository preaching. It takes time. It takes discipline. It takes practice. And we're looking for what is that one proposition that moves the sermon forward. Now, someone has asked, where do I find relevant illustrations for my messages? And we believe you look through everyday life. Uh, what's happening in your world around you? What's happening at work? What's happening in the entertainment world? What's happening in the sports world? As I mentioned last week, someone uh, asked me to preach, and it was three services, three services on a Sunday morning. And boy, I was tired after preaching three of the same sermon on Sunday morning. But maybe you remember the, the marriage of Harry and Meghan, Prince Harry and Princess Meghan. And so I used that as an illustration. I used that in my sermon. I talked about the royal wedding and other royal weddings. And I talked about how you too can be a part of God's forever family. You can be part of the royal nation. And there's only two ways you can become royalty. One is to by being born into royalty, and the other is by being asked or invited to come into royalty. And so we're talking about 
God the King sending his son, the Prince. So that's a great way to use illustrations. Use things that are happening in the world all around you. Now we have uh, viewers for our webinar right now coming in from India, some from Nepal. So we want to warmly welcome you. We see you in India. We see you in Nepal. We see you in the United States. Also, uh, webinar participants coming in right now from Brazil. So no matter where you're at in the world, we want to welcome you to this Lucent webinar and this chat session on expository preaching, the great gift and skill of teaching God's word to God's people. We want to urge you to sign up for the class through Lucent University on expository preaching. Now, it takes prayer. It takes discipline. It can even take fasting. That's where we take a whole day and don't eat food and just pray about, God, I need you to use me to preach this word. We need people to come in to God's presence ready to preach God's word, asking for God to use the messages that we prepare to reach God's people. We can't do this in the energy of the flesh. We can't do this in our own effort. We can't just say, I'm going to preach and I know it's going to work well because I'm so smart or I'm so gifted. No. When we're preaching God's word, we're relying on God. We're trusting God for the results. We're saying, God, please energize this message that I've written. So whether you're watching right now from Nepal, whether you're watching from India, whether you're watching from Brazil, whether you're here in the United States, we want to encourage you to keep preaching God's word. Uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says, Keruk ton ton logon, Keruxo ton logon, preach the word. And that's our message to you. That's our, our challenge to you. Are you preaching God's word? Preach the word. Don't preach just man's ideas. Don't just preach your newspaper of the day. Don't just get caught up in preaching politics. We're asking you and challenging you to preach God's word. That's what brings changed lives. That's what the Holy Spirit uses in the church, in the place of fellowship, in the place of worship. And I know that it can be a struggle where you're at. Maybe you would say, I haven't had a lot of training. Maybe you were to say, I haven't had a lot of academics. I haven't had a lot of study. And Lucent University is here for you because we're charging different price points depending on what part of the world you live in. So it's a beautiful model. It's a wonderful system of allowing you to enroll. Now, if you're already a Lucent University student, we want to say hello to you. And we want to encourage you to send in a message through the Lucent SysClass dashboard using the button send a message or emailing in through webinar at Lucent University. Now, some people are asking right now, the questions coming across, how do we use the communication model that best reaches the audience? What a great question. The reason we want to use this question that's so powerful is because you'll have different audiences. I'll say that with a whisper so that it even makes more emphasis. You'll have different audiences. Some people in your audiences might be male. Some might be female. Some people in the audience may be young. Some people may be old. You'll also have in your audience some people who have a lot of education, a lot of training, and then you'll have some people in your audience that have had no training. So we want to, at times, allow the audience to uh, create the purpose for the sermon. For example, let's say everyone in your audience is an unbeliever. That means no one in your audience has yet come to Jesus Christ. Well, you might include the gospel. Make sure you're preaching a message that has a gospel invitation, asking people to put their faith and trust and hope in Jesus Christ. At another time, you might be talking to a mature group of believers, someone who's been a Christian for many years, someone who's been a Christ follower most of their life. And in that, you may spend more time on teaching, more time on how they might become a more mature believer in Jesus Christ. Or let's say you're speaking in a men's event. Everyone in the audience is a male. It's a, for fathers or dads or husbands. And in that sense, you might make sure that your applications are coming from the truth of God's word, but the audience is hearing it for how to be a better husband, how to be a better dad. So the audience ends up having a huge effect, a big effect, a large effect on how you structure your sermon. In other words, if I'm speaking to a junior event with children, with kids, with young people, I maybe make the illustrations more relevant for them today. I make the challenges more relevant for that youth audience. 
or if I'm speaking to an older audience with many mature people in it, I might use some illustrations that they would understand. So it's the same truth, but different application. The same exegesis, but different illustrations. The same hermeneutics, but different style of delivery for that audience. So that's a great question. Now we talk about conclusions and introductions. So the question comes in, how do we format our introductions? The introduction we believe here at Lucent University should be made up of five parts. The image, the need, the subject, the text, and the preview. Image, need, subject, text, and preview. And so when you study with us here at Lucent in expository preaching, we'll walk you through all five steps of how to create that opening image, how to raise the need, how to bring out that one main idea, that homiletical proposition, that subject, how to get into the text and read the passage of Scripture in a way that interprets the passage of Scripture for the audience. And then finally, some preview, showing the audience where you're headed, showing the audience where this sermon is going. And then conclusions. We're going to talk about beginning with the end in mind, forming that conclusion so that people are challenged. The conclusion has two parts to it the challenge and the summary. The summary looks back over the sermon, looks back over the expository message and summarizes it into one main idea. And then the challenge, asking people, will you go live this out today? Will you step out in faith and live what God's asking you to live? So that's a, a brief overview of how we construct, how we write up, how we implement the introduction and the conclusion. The five steps of the introduction and the two main steps of the conclusion. And we believe that every great expository message has those elements of an introduction and a conclusion. We don't believe that you just start out by going right into the text. We want the people who've been living in the world all week to make a connection with the world and then move to the text. So we work with you on that and we teach you and we coach you on how to write great introductions, how to write great conclusions. Now, the question is coming in in this live webinar for Lucent University on expository preaching. What if I'm afraid to speak in public? And there are many, many people who have that fear of speaking in public. They say that the fear of speaking in public is oftentimes the number one fear, even a greater fear than spiders or snakes. Can you believe that? Some of us might say spiders and snakes. Wow, that would be my number one fear. But no, even greater than the fear of spiders or snakes could be the fear of speaking in public. And what we encourage you to do is to practice with a small group. Okay, maybe you practice at home with just a family member or a friend. Start with a small audience, maybe a small Sunday school class or a small group, and just give a brief message. We don't encourage you to stand up in front of hundreds of people and just preach for the first time. Just like overcoming that fear of flying or that fear of heights, you need to become acclimated. You maybe need to become accustomed to it. So the fear of speaking in public should not stop you from sharing God's word. If you feel the desire and the need and the gift to preach God's word, you'll want to see God as more important than man. I mean, what can the listeners do to you anyway? Don't be fearful of man. Be fearful of God. God is calling you to preach. He's calling you to speak. So enroll in that course through Lucent University on expository preaching and begin to practice preaching. Maybe the first time you just practice into a video camera or you just uh, use your cell phone and tape yourself, audio record yourself preaching and listen to that. Or maybe you just get one or two people and just say, would you be willing to listen to me as I practice preaching? And then maybe a small group of people, a small Sunday school class or a small audience. And that way you can overcome that fear and break through those barriers of fear and don't let those fears hold you back. I love that new worship chorus that says, I am no longer a slave to fear. Instead, I'm learning to trust in God. If we're, we can't have faith and fear at the same time, they'll mutually 
count each other out. You cannot live in the same time with faith and fear. So practice your faith in God and let your faith in God overcome that fear that you sometimes experience. And also, we need to let that fear drive us to our knees. Make that fear your friend so that you say, God, I'm feeling nervous right now. God, I'm feeling scared, and I need you to speak through me. I need you to use the power of your Holy Spirit to calm me and to let your words go out through me. And that's how all of ministry is. Whenever we're doing ministry, no matter what it is, serving in the nursery, doing evangelism, reaching lost people, writing commentaries or writing books, there's always that fear that what we're doing may not work or it may not be effective. And so we need to preach and become the best preachers we can in the power of the Holy Spirit, relying on God, and then obviously leaving the results up to God. Whenever we preach, we want to have these three steps in mind. Preaching as best we can. Preaching effectively. Number two, doing that in the power of the Holy Spirit. And number three, leaving the results up to God. It's His work. It's His ministry anyway. So we want to allow God to speak through us. Now, some people have asked, and the question comes in, what about support material? How do we know if we have the right support material? And that's a wonderful question. And now we have to ask, is it offensive? We don't want to say something that's very offensive to people. Uh, my friends from Brazil have even shared with me some things that we say or do can be offensive in one country, but not offensive in another country. Even our hand gestures, showing the back of our hand to someone, or even turning our back to someone can be very rude in one country, but not so much in another country. So we need to learn different customs and cultures. And also, we need to find out, does the illustration I'm using, does it make the main point of the passage? Is the support material I'm using appropriate for this passage? Obviously, we never want to use any kind of support material that's offensive, that causes someone pain, or maybe we're think, we think we're being funny, but it doesn't end up being very funny. So one of the best ways is to ask people who know you well. Get a trusted group of advisors, a trusted group of friends, and find out, I'm thinking about sharing this story this week. Do you think it would work well? I'm thinking about using this story this week. Would you approve of that? Would you think this is a good way to use this story? And oftentimes, people who know you well will give you good advice. I sometimes use my wonderful wife, and I'll say, I'm thinking about using this story this week. Do you think this story would be good or this story would be better? And I trust her because she's heard me teach and preach many times, and she knows the listeners. Oftentimes, she'll be able to say, no, that first illustration isn't very good. That won't work. You should use the other illustration. So find some people who you know well. Find some people who trust you and have them be a sounding board and ask and answer, is this an appropriate type of support material? Also, it depends on the audience. If you're working with an audience who's very, very educated, let's say they've studied at the doctoral level or the master's degree level, they're very, very learned, they've taken lots of academics, then you might be able to use an illustration that's more complicated, that's more academic. But let's say you're with a group of people that have not studied at all. They're not well read, they're not studied, they have not been to university, they've not been to graduate school. You might keep an illustration more simple, more easy to understand. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, how did Jesus teach? Jesus taught in a very simple way. And Jesus, as you know, was the best teacher ever. Jesus Christ was the best communicator ever. So Jesus taught in a very simple way. There was a mustard seed. There was a king. There was a kingdom. There was a father and a son. So Jesus just used everyday objects. He just used the nature around him. He just used family stories. So we can always know that even though Jesus used very simple stories, they communicated in a very, very deep way. And the question comes in, how do I preach about sin that is being committed in my congregation? Wow, a very powerful question, a very specific question. Some sin or some problem in the current congregation, how do I address that? Well, number one would be to never mention names. Okay, we never, from the pulpit, would say, and we know that this person, and we say their name, is committing sin. Not a good way to preach. Do not call people's names from the pulpit. 
And I wouldn't even say this group of people or this class or something like that. I think the best way to address sin in a congregation might be to speak on that from God's word, to say, uh, we know this passage speaks about gossip. So let's look at this passage on gossip, Proverbs 11. And maybe we teach on, uh, you know, gossip causes problems in the church. And that way, I think, let the Holy Spirit convict the listener. If someone in the church, if someone in the congregation has a specific sin they're struggling with, and you address that sin head on, you don't uh, walk around it or you don't tiptoe around it, but you address the sin head on and say, today we're going to be speaking about gossip. And that way, the person who's really struggling with that or the sin you've heard about that, they'll feel conviction of the Holy Spirit and they'll know that, wow, this message was for me today. That God was speaking through me today through the preacher. So I don't believe you have to address it by talking about it or saying the person's name, but I do believe you should address it by going to the passage of Scripture, by going to the Bible verse that addresses it and speak on it in that way. That, that would probably be the best way to address it. Now, we only have a few minutes left here in our webinar from Lucent University on expository preaching. And I want to encourage you to enroll, register, sign up for our course on expository preaching through Lucent University. And keep sending in those questions through Lucent Sys class through the dashboard. You can click on the button, send the message, or you can contact us at webinar at Lucent University. And from time to time, we'll be doing these webinars so that you can invite your friends, invite your colleagues to ask questions that you may not get the answers for any other place. We're here to encourage you, we're here to challenge you and build you up and encourage you to do God's work in God's way. There's nothing more exciting than being used by God to do ministry. It's the best way to live. God wants to use your gifts of preaching and teaching. God wants to use your gifts of service in the kingdom of God. And Lucent University wants to partner with what God's doing in your life so that you can be the most effective minister possible. You may actually be in a location where there's very little training, where there's very little uh, Christian education, and Lucent University has stepped out on faith to help reach you and challenge you to enroll in the Lucent University. Many, many courses available and more courses coming all the time. So if you have a desire to preach, if you have a desire to teach, if you know people who you feel should take courses, contact them and have them reach out to us and contact us at Lucent University on the World Wide Web. I'm your friendly professor, Dr. Paul Pettit, and I am so happy that you're interested in serving God and living your life for Him. Doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter uh, where you come from, doesn't matter your income, God wants to use you. It, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter how much training you've had, God starts with you wherever you're at, and he uh, encourages you and reaches you to do his work. And that's the exciting aspect of ministry, allowing yourself to be used by God. And we believe the best way to teach and preach is by using expository preaching, teaching from God's word, preaching from God's word, and not preaching the opinions of man or the news of the day or the politics of the day, but to focus on that one main idea from the Bible passage, that one main idea from God's Word. Well, make sure you contact us. Make sure you reach out to us. Uh, tell us how you're doing. Give us an update from your country. Give us an update from your part of the world. And we'll be along shortly to do another one of these live Lucent webinars. And they'll also be made available later so that you can watch the content so that you can take notes, so that you can join us later, even whether we're live or we're coming at you at a different date, this type of session will be very helpful for you. You can find it informative. And you can chat with us, you can send us questions, you can email us, you can contact us at Lucent University. And uh, questions, comments coming in, affirmation. One person saying, amen, which means two thumbs up. Way to go.
God be with you, that type of thing. Blessing. So uh, other comments coming in from other parts of the world. And we are here on using technology because instead of just being face to face and just reaching the people in our neighborhoods through technology and through the World Wide Web, we can reach people literally all over the world through the power of technology, this gift that God's giving us through the internet and using his word, we can partner with what good and godly people are doing to encourage the church, to encourage the kingdom of God. Hello? Hello? Hey, hello, how are you? Great, great job, Dr. Patton. Oh, well, I hope it went well. Now we have to hang up. Okay. Oh, so, so, thanks. No, 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 Facebook Live. Oh, well, I hope it went well. I'll see you. Okay.